بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الطلب الأعزاء عساكم تكونوا كلكم بخير وصحة وعافية Today إن شاء الله we're gonna continue with unit 4.1 and um, we're gonna discuss mitosis in details uh, let's recall what we have learned last time. Uh, we began by discussing cell division and the roles of cell division. Then uh, we discussed the structure of chromosomes and we said it's a complex of DNA and proteins. And then we said a duplicated chromosome consists of two sister chromatids. And I told you to uh, recall the difference between chromatin, chromatids, and chromosomes. We also discussed the difference between mitosis and meiosis. We mentioned that mitosis takes place in somatic cells, while meiosis results in the production of gametes, which are sexual cells. Uh, mitosis results in the same number of chromosomes, while meiosis results in cells that have half the number of chromosomes. Uh, we also discussed the cell cycle and the stages of the cell cycle. Uh, we focused more on interphase. We mentioned the phases of interphase, which are G1, the first growth gap, uh, the S phase, which is synthesis of DNA, and the G2, which is the second gap. And we also mentioned that interphase is a preparatory phase. That's why it takes long time. It takes around 90% of the time that the cell spends in the uh, cycle. All right, so for this lecture, the outcomes of this lecture will be we are going to describe each stage of mitosis. We have five stages of mitosis. Uh, the second thing, we are going to recognize that cytokinesis follows mitosis. So we have mitosis first, and then immediately after that, we have cytokinesis. And the third outcome for today is we are going to compare uh, cytokinesis in animal cells and cytokinesis in plant cells. And you will realize that cytokinesis in plant is different than in animal because of the presence of the cell wall. Then we are going to explain the formation of mitotic spindle and explain its roles. And finally, we are going to talk a bit about cell uh, regulation of the cell cycle and we are going to link regulation to cancer. We are going to understand why cancer cells behave differently than normal cells. Mitosis is divided into five different subphases. Five subphases. The first one is prophase prophase that's number one the second the second one is pro metaphase pro metaphase the third one is metaphase so if you notice the second phase is this one pro contains the word pro and contains the word meta so it's pro metaphase the third one is metaphase the fourth one is anaphase, anaphase. And the last one is telophase, telophase. All right, now let's have a look at the overview of mitosis before digging into the details of what happens in each. All right, so this is the interface. Okay, we discussed interface last time, and here it says this is G2 of interface. So we are done with G1. We are done with S phase. 
now we are in G2 and this is the end of G2 okay that is the end of G2 and we mentioned that we have two centrioles then the first stage of and this is not mitosis okay this is the interface mitosis starts from here we start with prophase prophase is number one you can notice the difference between the chromatin here and chromosome here you can see that now they are thicker they are more obvious they are more distinct right so that's prophase then the second one is prometaphase you can see the difference as well here between the chromosomes in the prophase and the chromosomes in prometaphase now they are even thicker and shorter and they are much more obvious the third thing is metaphase okay we see the chromosomes very clearly on this middle plane here and the fourth is anaphase okay you can see that now the daughter chromosomes are being separated they are being pulled to the um, ends of the cell and you can also notice that the cell is elongating finally we have telophase telophase the chromosomes are on opposite ends of the cell and telophase is followed by cytokinesis if you remember cyto cyto comes from the cell kinesis is division so that's division of the cytoplasm okay division of the cytoplasm you can notice here that the cytoplasm is starting to divide all right Now that you have an overview of the five subphases of mitosis, we are ready to move to the details of what happens in each phase. So let's start with the first subphase, which is prophase. Pro in science means before, okay? And phase means a stage. So that's the first subphase. What happens in here, as you notice, okay, um, this is an interphase. This cell is inter in interphase, and this one is in prophase. The first thing that we notice in this figure is, this is what first, let me ask you, what is this? Now, this purple thing, this purple ball is the nucleus, right? This is the nucleus and this inside the nucleus this is known as nucleolus nucleolus okay if it's one we say it's nucleolus if it's plural we say nucleoli okay so the first thing you notice here that the nucleoli is disappearing the nucleoli is disappearing it is still there but it's very faint when we compare it with the nucleoli in the interface the second thing here the chromosomes are duplicated so this is a chromosome this is one chromosome this is the second chromosome and okay so this is one this is two and this is three so we have in this cell three duplicated chromosomes three duplicated chromosome what's the meaning of duplicated duplicated means that it has made a copy of um, uh, the chromosome okay so we have two identical copies now if you notice here the chromosomes they come together in this area over here and this is known as the centromere it's the narrow area where the two sister chromatids join together so chromosome is made up of two sister chromatids okay two sister chromatids 
So let me draw the X-shaped chromosome here. This is a duplicated chromosome. That's a duplicated chromosome. And these are two sister chromatids. Chroma. All right, and this narrow area over here is the centromere. centromere. So duplicated chromosomes are made up of two sister chromatids. And we also notice that mitotic spindle is beginning to form. Notice on this figure on your left that you had an aster. That's an aster. But now you have mitotic spindle are beginning to arise. And also the asters or the centri or centrosomes are moving to opposite poles. This is moving to this side and the other one is moving to the opposite side. OK, that's what happen happens in prophase. The second phase is prometaphase. Prometaphase. What happens in this phase? Uh, this, the figure that you have on your left, this is prophase, which is the first phase. Uh, while the figure that you have on your right, this is prometaphase. So let's compare the difference. As you notice, the first thing that you notice over here is that the nuclear envelope fragments. The nuclear envelope is the membrane, the double membrane of the nucleus. Okay, you can see on this figure on your right that the nuclear envelope is breaking down. It's fragmenting. Okay, it's starting to disappear. And this is very important so that the chromosomes can spread through the cells, they can arrange nicely, so that later on they can be segregated onto the opposite poles of the cell. Right? So that's the first thing. Then after that, the spindle microtubules, which are the yellow things over here, spindle microtubules, they interact with the chromosomes in a region, in a special region that we call kinetochore. We name it kinetochore. Okay, let's have a look at this figure on your right. So these guys over here, these are called the spindle macrotubules. Recall microtubules from the cytoskeleton. I'm sure you've studied the lecture of cytoskeleton and now you should be very familiar with the spindle microtubules. So the spindle microtubules interact with chromosomes in this area over here. Can you see the black thing? This region is called kinetochore. Kinetochore. Now, kinetochore is a protein structure that forms on a chromatid during cell division. It is present in the centromere and it is important to allow it to attach to the spindle fiber on the chromosome. Okay, so let's have a look at the definition of kinetochore. It's a specialized area of centromere for microtubule attachment. Okay, so you have, let's have a look at this um, duplicated chromosome over here. Okay, let me select a different color. Now, this area over here, okay, the narrow region, this is called centromere. In the centromere itself, you have a special area. Can you see this black dot over here? and this black dot over here. These are called kinetochore. These are special protein, proteins 
that allow the chromosome to attach to the microtubule. Okay, so please make sure you understand the difference between centromere and kinetochore. Centromere is the narrow region. Kinetochore is the protein that is present in the centromere itself where the, the microtubules or the spindle microtubules attach to the chromosomes. Notice here, this is a spindle. It attaches to the kinetochore, right? And this is the spindle from the opposite side. It attaches to the kinetochore over here. And this one as well attaches to the kinetochore and from the opposite end, uh, the same thing. Metaphase is the third phase of mitosis. So that's number three, metaphase, metaphase. What happens in this uh, phase? Now the figure that you have on your right hand side, this is pro metaphase. And the figure that you have on your right is the metaphase. The first thing that we noticed here that the centrosomes are at opposite poles of the cell. They are exactly in the opposite pole of the cell. This is in the north pole and this is in the south pole. Also, the spindle fibers push the sister chromatids until they are all arranged in the metaphase plate. This is the metaphase plate over here. Okay, what is the metaphase plate? It's a region or a plane that is approximately equidistant from the two poles of a dividing cell. So the distance from the end of the cell to the metaphase plate is equal to the distance from the opposite pole of the cell to the metaphase plate. That's the meaning of equidistant. Let's have a look here. It's an imaginary plane that is equidistant, uh, equidistant between the two poles of a dividing cell. Okay, so metaphase actually comes the word metaphase actually comes from the word metaphase plate, okay? Metaphase, you can say it's in the middle. Metaphase in the middle. That's M, that's M. To make it easier for you to remember, all right? That's the third phase. After metaphase, we have the anaphase. Anaphase. Ana in Greek means up. Okay, this is number four. This is the fourth subphase, anaphase. Uh, now, anaphase uh, comes after metaphase, and now the replicated chromosomes are split. And the newly uh, or the two sister chromatids uh, mi migrate to opposite poles of the cell. Okay, so here it says centromeres divide, separating sister chromatids. So this is very important. The sister chromatids are being separated. What are we separating in anaphase? We are separating the sister chromatids. We are separating the sister chromatids. Now these sister chromatids in some textbooks are also called daughter chromosomes. So daughter chromosomes or sister chromatids are basically the same thing. Okay, now let's have a look at this figure before moving to the next point. Okay, so uh, the figure that you see on your left-hand side, this is metaphase, metaphase, and the figure that you see on your right-hand side, this is the anaphase, anaphase. All right, so this, these, the ones, the spindle fibers which attach to the kinetochore, like this one, and this one, this one, 
and this one, the same thing from the opposite end. These are called kinetochore macrotubules. Kinetochore microtubules. What's the function of kinetochore microtubules? Is to pull the sister chromatids to opposite poles of the cell. So these are going to be pulled upwards and these are going to be pulled downwards. What's the thing that pulls them away? It's the kinetochore microtubules. Okay. Now, if you pay attention to the figure, you notice that we also have microtubules that are not attached to the kinetochore, like this one over here and the one from the opposite side. Okay, these guys, they interact together. This one as well. These guys. Now these, we call them non-kinetochore microtubules. Non-kinetochore microtubules. What's the function of non-kinetochore microtubules? So they interact together in order to make the cell longer, in order to elongate the cell. Notice here that the cell is starting to elongate. Okay. Remember that the main function of mitosis is to produce two daughter cells. So from one cell, you are producing two cells, which means that you need to elongate the cell. And these non-kinetochore microtubules, their function is to interact together in order to make the cell longer. Okay, we're just elongating the cell. While on the other hand, the kinetochore microtubules, their function is to pull the sister chromatids or the daughter chromosomes to opposite poles of the cell. The final stage of mitosis is the telophase. Telophase. Telo means end. So this is technically the last stage of mitosis. What happens in telophase? Well, um, the sister chromatids, they reach the opposite ends. So you can see this is one end and this is the other end. So in telophase, the uh, sister chromatids reach the two poles of the cells. And you can notice also the, uh, that the uh, nuclear envelope is beginning to reform. Can you see the nuclear envelope over here? It's starting to reform again. And here as well, the nuclear envelope is forming again. And at the end of telophase, we have an elongated cell with two identical daughter nuclei. These guys are identical. Remember in mitosis, we have identical daughter cells. Chromatin fibers become less highly coiled. Can you see now um, the figure on your left-hand side? This is the anaphase. Notice um, the chromosomes over here and compare them with the sister chromatids here. Can you notice the difference? The ones on telophase, they're now less highly coiled. They look thinner and longer than the ones at anaphase. Okay, so they become less highly uh, coiled. And telophase is followed by cytokinesis. Cytokinesis is the division of the cytoplasm. The division of the cytoplasm. Okay. And this is cytokinesis over here. It's shown 
by this cleavage that you can see in this figure over here. We're going to talk more about cytokinesis later on, inshallah. This figure shows mitosis and cytokinesis in plant cells. Okay, so I'll take this opportunity to review the stages that we have just uh, mentioned in details. This is in plant cells. Let's look at prophase first. In prophase, the chromatin is condensing. Okay, you can notice the difference here and there. Okay, in interphase, it is uh, the chromatin is very, very thin and you can't really see obvious and discrete uh, chromosomes. However, here you can see the chromosomes are beginning to condense and now they are becoming thicker and much more obvious. The nucleolus is starting to disappear also. In prometaphase, what happens? We can now see individual and distinct chromosomes. Now they're even thicker and shorter and more obvious. Of course, each one consists of two sister chromatids. So each chromosome consists of two sister chromatids. And notice the nucleolus has completely disappeared over here. The third phase is metaphase. The chromosomes are all arranged at the metaphase plate and of course uh, you can't see the macrotubules over here but the macrotubules are attached to the kinetochore. What is the kinetochore? Kinetochore is a special area in the centromere where the spindle macrotubules attach and they pull the sister chromatids to opposite poles of the cell in the fourth phase, which is the anaphase. So the sister chromatids are separated and moved to the opposite poles of the cell. Finally, we have the telophase. You can see the chromosomes are now located at the two ends of the cell and the cytoplasm is being divided over here. So that's cytokinesis. Telophase always, we say telophase and cytokinesis, okay? Because they, uh, the two processes take place one after the other immediately after telophase, we have cytokinesis. Cytokinesis is the division of the cytoplasm. Let's divide the word. Cyto means cytoplasm. Kinesis means movement. So that's movement of the cytoplasm. Okay, cytokinesis uh, occurs after mitosis. So it follows mitosis. And cytokinesis is different in plant and animal cells. Why is it different? For a simple thing, it's because the plant cells have cell wall, while the animal cells do not have a cell wall. And that's why cytokinesis is different. And in the next slide, we are going to observe the difference in cytokinesis between plant cells and animal cells. All right, so let's start with cytokinesis in animal cells. As we mentioned, cytokinesis is the final stage of cell division. And during cytokinesis, the cytoplasm splits in two and the cells uh, divide, the cell divides. Okay, so in animal cells, uh, cytokinesis is indicated or starts by the formation of a cleavage furrow. You have a beautiful microscope, electron microscope figure here that shows you the cleavage furrow. Uh, and this term you have seen before in the cytoskeleton lecture. So the contractile ring forms, as you can see, there is a ring here. This ring forms due to the interaction of actin filaments. 
of actin filaments, okay, or microfilaments. Remember microfilaments from the cytoskeleton lecture, or we also call them actin filaments. Actin filaments. All right, so in animal cells, uh, the plasma membrane of the parent cell pinches inward. So you can see it's going to the inside. It's pinching. It's like you have a Play-Doh, okay, and you hold it with your fingers so that you form a ring exactly in the middle and you keep on tightening your fingers until that ring or the two cells are completely separated. The two daughter cells are completely separated from each other. Okay, so let me make a simple drawing here. Okay, so we start with a very faint cleavage furrow. This is the beginning of a cleavage furrow. This is the nucleus. We've got two cells. This here, this is the cleavage furrow. And then what happens, and this is the ring of the contractile ring of the actin filaments. And then what happens next is this cleavage furrow goes deeper. Okay, it goes deeper. And now you can see it has gone inward and later on it's going to go even deeper this way. And now there is only a tiny bit until we separate the two cells. And finally you have a separation of the two daughter cells. So it kind of happens step by step, okay? Where the contra contractile ring goes deeper and deeper until finally you have got um, two cells that are, or a single cell that has pinched into two daughter cells. Okay, so the ring deepens until the cell pinches into two daughter cells. I'm sorry, I have written on top of that. Let me just erase all the ink. Okay, so the ring deepens until we have uh, the cell pinching to form two daughter cells. All right, so cytokinesis in plant cells cannot proceed with a cleavage furrow. Why? For a simple reason, because plant cells have cell walls. So instead of cleavage furrow, we have the cell plate forming in cytokinesis. All right, now let's look at this figure on top here. You can see that this is the nucleus over here. Just a minute. Okay, that's the nucleus. Okay, uh, this is cell number one and this is cell number two. And you can see over here that we have vesicles that are migrating to the center between the two cells, the two cells that are going to form. So we have vesicles, you can notice here this white circles, these are vesicles. Okay, now from where do we get these vesicles? This, these vesicles, they uh, are formed from the Golgi apparatus. Remember the Golgi apparatus? The trans side of the Golgi apparatus, vesicles are forming and they are migrating to the uh, center between or the, to the center of the cell so that it can form two cells. Okay, so vesicles from the Golgi apparatus, uh, you can see in this figure over here, right? So these are vesicles that are formed in order to form the cell plate. Okay, we want to form the cell plate. And then in the next stage, what happens? 
the cell plate becomes longer. It becomes larger because uh, now these tiny vesicles have fused together. So they have fused together all over except for uh, the membrane region over here or the ends. Okay, they have not, not fused yet. So this we call it, still we call it the cell plate because it's incomplete yet. And then finally, okay, you have the vesicles fusing until the whole thing is formed from one end to another end. Now this one, okay, or this wall, we call it the new cell wall, okay? Before we called it the cell plate because it was not ready yet. It was not fused completely from the two ends, but now over here it's complete. And now only we can call it the cell wall. We can name it the cell wall. Okay, so contents of the cell plate will make, will eventually make a new cell wall between the two daughter cells. Okay, between the two daughter cells. So you notice that we don't have a cleavage farrow in uh, cytokinesis of plant cells. Instead of cleavage farrow, we have the cell plate. How is the cell plate formed? They are formed from vesicles that form from the Golgi apparatus and migrate to the center of the cell. They fuse together to form the cell plate and then at the end, uh, they fuse with the ends of the membrane to make the new cell wall. Now let's have a closer look at mitotic spindle, which is responsible for the uh, segregation of chromosomes to daughter cells. So mitotic spindle are fibers that are composed of microtubules and associated proteins. What do they do? They distribute chromosomes to daughter cells. Remember the anaphase where the two sister chromatids are separated from each other and they move to the opposite poles of the cell. All right, how do mitotic spindle form? They begin to form from centrosomes. What are centrosomes? You already are familiar with centrosomes. They are also called the microtubule organizing centers, microtubule organizing centers. So mitotic spindle is a complex structure. It allows the accurate distribution of chromosomes during cell division. So they are the ones that do all the action of moving the chromosomes. Without mitotic spindle, we won't be able to move our chromosomes to opposite ends of the cells. So animal cells, if you can recall from unit one, uh, they have a pair of centrioles. So each centrosome is made up of two centrioles, two centrioles. Okay, so I'm sorry, I have highlighted this. I meant to highlight this one. This is a centro so don't confuse between centromere and centrosome. Centromere is the narrow region in the chromosome, while centrosome is um, uh, centrosome is the microtubule organizing center where we have the microtubules uh, originating from, from it. Each centriole in animal cells is made up of two centrioles. And remember, this is only in animal cells. Two centrioles. Let's have a look at, cent at one centriole. This is a centriole sorry, at one centrosome. This is one centrosome. It's made up of one and two, two centrioles. This is another 
centrosome. It's made up of one and two centrioles. So centrioles are not found in plant cell and the function is somewhat undefined. It means even that even though plant cells do not have centrioles, they have centrosomes. And a centrosome is a microtubule organizing center. So it does its function perfectly, even though it doesn't have centrioles. Okay. Now let's have a cl closer look at the formation of mitotic spindle. Okay, now let's have a quick revision first. How many centrosomes have we got here? How many centrosomes? We have two centrosomes. When did the centrosome duplicate? It duplicated in the interface. All right, so before division, the cell had one centrosome, and then in the interphase, it duplicated to form two centrosomes. Now, each centrosome is made up of a pair of centrioles. So this is an animal cell, obviously. Okay, now uh, let's look at uh, what happens in prophase with regards to the mitotic spindle. You can see that early mitotic spindle is forming. And then in prometaphase, the mitotic spindle are even uh, have elongated further in order to arrange the chromosomes in the metaphase plate. Okay, we have we have already spoken about non-kinetochore microtubule. These are microtubules that interact together. Why do the, do they do so? In order to elongate the cell. And we have also spoken about kinetochore microtubules. These are microtubules that interact with the kinetochore. Okay. And their function is to move the uh, sister chromatids to opposite ends of the cell. Now let's have a closer look at mitotic spindle. We are looking at the figure below over here. This is the spindle of the microtubule. Remember microtubules in the cytoskeleton lecture? Microtubules are composed of a single type of globular protein. Globular protein. And this globular protein is known as tubulin. Tubulin. Okay, so uh, the monomer is, or in this case, it's a dimer. It's not a monomer, it's a dimer. What's the meaning of a dimer? It's composed of two units. This is alpha tubulin and this is beta tubulin. This is alpha tubulin and this is beta tubulin. Dimer means two units. Okay, uh, let me check if the animation is working. Yes, it is working. You can see the units are going over to the bigger uh, uh, microtubule and that's how they elongate. So we keep adding a dimer we keep adding dimers here, and this hollow tube, uh, tubule is elongating. It's elongating, and this is how it elongates. We keep adding dimer units. All right, the dimer units are the alpha tubulin and the beta tubulin. Now let's have a look at the separation of the sister chromatids. So this is a duplicated chromosome. This is a duplicated chromosome. What do we call these guys here? These are sister chromatid. So a duplicated chromosome consists of two sister chromatids. Now this narrow region over here, we call it the centromere. In the centromere, we have a very special protein complex that is called kinetochore. So this green thing over here, let 
we select a pen. This green thing over here, this is the kinetochore. This is the kinetochore. Okay, what happens next? The kinetochore microtubule, they attach to the what? To the kinetochore from the name. Okay, so that's the kinetochore. Kinetochore microtubules, they attach to the kinetochore. Why do they do so? Because we need to separate the two sister chromatids to the opposite ends of the cell. Let's have a look. So this is during anaphase. The microtubules have separated our sister chromatids and we agreed previously that we can also call them daughter chromosomes. How does separation of sister chromatids occur? Let's have a closer look. So you can see here the um, kinetochore microtubules, they start to shorten at the kinetochore end. So we are cutting the units over here. Okay, we are removing the units, the tubulin units. You can see we are cutting them now. We want them to become shorter so that the sister chromatids will move towards uh, the pole. Okay, so it's kind of pulling action. So as we uh, break the tubulin units over here, the chromosome will be moving to the opposite end. Right, okay, so the chromosome is moving this side chromosome movement is towards this side. As this becomes shorter, it will reach here, for example, and then we'll keep on um, releasing the tubulin subunits. Now it has reached here. It's moving this side, this side, until finally it will reach the opposite end of the cell. The chromosome will be here. Okay, so that's how separation takes place. It's by releasing the tubulin subunits. Where does this take place? It takes place here at the kinetochore. Okay, and notice here that we have motor protein in action. See these, uh, this red legs over here? Remember motor proteins? Please link this lecture to the other lectures because we have seen many things that we have already learned about, but you need to go back and link this lecture to the previous uh, lectures. Why do we need the non-kinetochore microtubules? I have mentioned this several times, but again, here it is in one slide, we need the non-kinetochore microtubules in order to elongate the dividing cell. Why do we need to elongate the cell? Why do we need the cell to become longer? Of course, that's logic and common sense because we are producing two cells, okay? We are producing two daughter cells and these daughter cells need to have a similar size to the parent cell. So of course we need to elongate the cell, the dividing cell, so that we can get two daughter cells. How does the cell elongate? It elongates because we have non-kinetochore microtubules. These guys here that interact together. Non-kinetochore micro Tubules. Oops, this one. Okay. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, now we are done with the five subphases of mitosis. We are done with the action of the microtubule. We have discussed uh, kinetochore microtubules and non kinetochore microtubules and the function of each one of those. So now we move to the last bit of the lecture. First, let me ask you a question. Do these cells that you see in front of you, skin cells and liver cells, do these cells divide at the same rate? The answer is no, because 
cell division is regulated. Cell division is regulated. What's the meaning of that? Uh, for example, skin cells, they divide rapidly in order to maintain a protective barrier. Okay, so these guys, they, um, they divide rapidly. What about liver cells? Do you think liver cells can divide? Yes, the answer is yes, they will divide if part of the liver is removed. So if we remove part of the liver over here, let's say uh, a person had an accident, okay, and part of the liver was removed, then uh, the liver cells will divide, okay, in this area in order to replace the missing part. Okay, that's the meaning of regulated. Each kind of cell has a different uh, division, has a different, uh, sorry, rate of cell division. Right? Okay, what happens when cell division is out of control? Is out of control. So it's not, basically it means that it's not regulated. We have it controlled all the time. Okay, inside our bodies, subhanAllah, without even feeling it. But sometimes things might go wrong and we have cell division that is out of control. When this happens, then uh, cancer is going to develop. Okay, so let's look at this figure. You've got normal cells that are pink in color. And then you have cancer cells here. You can see them. They are dividing uncontrollably without any control. You can see they are bulging out here from this side and from this side. They are even coming over the normal cell. And you can see their size is much larger than the normal cell. When this happens, when things go out of control, when cells start dividing uncontrollably, then in this case, uh, cancer can develop. All right, how does cancer cell develop? Well, you start with a normal cell. A normal cell is regulated. Okay, there are controls, there are checkpoints that make sure that cells are dividing in the required rate. But sometimes that normal cell can change to abnormal cell. Ab means not in science. So abnormal means it's a not, uh, nor it's a cell that is not normal. Why does this happen? It happens sometimes due to genetic changes. Uh, these uh, genes are usually inherited from the parents. So sometimes you have families that have cancers very frequently, okay, because these things are inherited, or it can also be due to certain environmental exposures like chemicals, like radiations, for example, UV radiations or X-rays, etc. Okay, so a normal cell will be converted to an abnormal cell and that abnormal cell can then lead to a tumor. Shmana tumor? Tumor manata waram. Okay. Okay, now tumors can be either benign, tumors can be either benign, or they can be malignant. Okay, tumor معناته ورم, benign, الورم ممكن يكون ورم حميد, أو ممكن يكون ورم خبيث, malignant معناته خبيث. Now, if the tumor is malignant, then only we call it cancer. Okay? الورم الحميد ما نسميه سرطان. Okay? It's benign. We, we still, we call it a tumor. But if the tumor is malignant, then we call it cancerous or cancer. All right. Now let's have a look at the difference between benign tumor and malignant tumor. This is a benign tumor. You can see we are looking at the red cells over, over here. You can see that cells are not spreading, okay? They stay in one area. And uh, this is very simple to get rid, rid of because usually with surgery, we can remove the benign tumor. However, 
if there is a malignant tumor, which is cancer, why is it dangerous? Because the cells, they have the ability to spread to other tissues and organs. Notice here, it is spreading. It is not staying in one area. It's spreading to other regions, other tissues, other organs, okay? And that's why we call it malignant or cancerous. Let's go back. So um, we have got a tumor that grows from a single cancer cell. So remember, we have a cell and this cell becomes abnormal cell. And then from that abnormal cell, you can have a tumor. Okay, so we have a tumor over here in the breast tissue. This tumor uh, grows from one, just one single cell. That single cell will keep on dividing, okay, to produce a lump, which we call a tumor. Then um, after forming a tumor, it can invade the tissues that are in the neighborhood. So you can see it has become uh, larger. Then after that, cancer cells, they can spread. And this is the problem. They can spread. How can they spread? Through the circulatory system. What is the cir circulatory system? It's either spreading through blood vessels, which is part of the circulatory system, or through the lymph vessels or the lymphatic system. Okay, these systems uh, or the cancer cells, they use this system in order to spread to other parts or other organs, other tissues. If that happened, then uh, there is a probability that cancer cells can survive somewhere else and they can actually form a new tumor in another part of the body. So they can spread from the breast, for example, to the stomach, uh, to the kidneys, to the lungs, to whatever, to other regions, maybe to the blood. And this is how cancer uh, develops. Allah yahfadna wa yahmina min hadha al-marad wa min kulli al-amrad al-thaniya. Dear students, ladies and gentlemen, this takes us to the end of this lecture. I hope you had an enjoyable time with me, Dr. Behja, and inshallah, next time we are going to uh, continue Unit 4. We are going to start with meiosis, which is Lecture 4.2. Again, that will be a long lecture, so I have divided and 4.2b. See you next time, inshallah, and have a lovely day.